So I said that we've done the sort of hard work of the form has been created in such a way that params conveniently has collected into a single hash all of the things the user filled in, and we are almost ready to pass that to active record. Um, but the reason it's almost and not completely is that you have to put some safeguards in place so that users are not necessarily able to do whatever they want. In our trivial example, there's not that much that you'd have to worry about. But if you're, instead of a movie model, you had something like a user model, and if one of the attributes of a user was whether they have admin privilege or not, you would not want the user to be able to sort of artificially construct an HTML form submission that just sets their admin bit to true, submits it, and then blammo, they just made themselves an admin. So the way that Rails prevents this is uh, by a mechanism that when it was introduced into Rails, it was called strong parameters, which basically means that the controller, even though it now has a copy of everything the user has submitted, the controller gets to decide, in fact, it has to decide which of those form field parameters supplied by the users are allowed to be passed to active record to update or create a model. And it's to avoid security problems like this, where users should not be arbitrarily allowed to change anything. The controller method decides who's allowed to do what. So if we take a look at what that code looks like, when we left off, we were still in this controller method. We had invoked the debugger. And we had seen that we have this convenient hash in params movie that has the parameters we want. But notice that it also has this other key that says permitted false. What that means is these parameters have come from the user, and therefore we do not trust them. These parameters are not allowed to be applied to the model. And indeed, if I were to call create, the model would not actually be created with these parameters because the parameters aren't permitted. Active Record is smart enough to not actually apply an update or a create operation unless permitted is true. So we need to do something to have the controller decide, yes, these parameters are safe. I'm not worried about them. It is OK for Active Record to use them to update values or to create a new model based on those values. So if we look at our controller code, that is done. I'm calling a helper function here called movie params. And if I just scroll down a little bit in the file, I'll show you where that is. Here's movie params. And its job, as the comments suggest, is to only allow trusted parameters to get through. So params, that's the hash, or the, the thing that quacks like a hash, I should say, that has been passed to me that Rails has gathered all of the user's input into. I'm going to assert two conditions about it. One of them is that params needs to have a key called movies, because presumably that's what the form was supposed to submit. So if there isn't a key called movies that you know has these subparameters in it, then something's wrong. Maybe it's a malicious attack. Maybe the page was broken. But in any case, I don't want to go any further than that. And assuming that it requires a key called movies, within that key, I will allow a parameter called title and a parameter called rating to pass through. So I'm going to go back up to the controller method. And our debugger is still here, by the way. So we can actually pick up sort of right where we left off. I'm going to single step one more line. We're about to do line 26. And we're going to single step. So I'm going to say next. OK, we've skipped over line 26. So I should be able to look at new movie params and see what they are, because that's what got returned from my little helper function there. Lo and behold, I still have a hash of the parameters that I got, but now permitted is true. And it's because I said the params had better have a key called movie. And assuming that it does, within that, within that subhash, I will permit any keys named title or rating. I wouldn't permit other ones. So basically, all parameters are untrusted by default until you specifically say someplace in your code it's OK to trust them. And so now, as a sneak preview, spoiler alert, the save is going to work. So I can tell you with confidence that this if is going to land us at line 29. So I'm going to just skip over and say continue until line 29. OK, so movie has been saved. What does that mean? If I take a look at movie, um, it has acquired an ID, which was not in params. It didn't have one before because it didn't used to exist. Now it has one, so we know it's been saved. Um, and indeed, it's got a title, it's got a rating. We didn't provide a way for the user to enter a release date, so it stayed as nil for the time being. We'll have more to say about it in the future. The key aspect here, and I can demonstrate this by counterexample, suppose that I remove rating 
from the allowed parameters list, I save my controller method. I'm going to do this with a different one. Once again, we've broken in the controller. I will single step over the next line, and I will take a look at new movie params. So what happened? And look, there's even a, a helpful message, unpermitted parameter, right? Because I specifically removed the ratings parameter from the list of allowed things. So now, the return value from my movie params function, that key has been surgically removed from the params hash. So if I were now to continue with my create operation, what active record will actually get is just this. So the ratings field for the new movie that got created would just be nil because I didn't allow that parameter through. This is an extremely common bug, and it's the reason that I'm dwelling on it so much. You have an existing model. Everything about it works. You decide that you need to add one or two more attributes to that model. And so you go back and modify the page that serves the form so that now the user has a place to enter those attributes. But you forget to somewhere in the controller indicate that it is OK to pass those attributes through to active record. And then you're confused because you added these attributes, and yet they're getting set to nil for every model you create. And that's usually the reason why. So as a brief recap, so we saw how new and create work together. We saw how the form fields, if you use the Rails helpers to create the forms, the form fields are named in such a way that the parameters that are corresponding to a single model instance all get collected into a nice hash. We also saw that you have to explicitly say which of those parameters you expect to be there with require, which ones are allowed to be passed through to active record with permit, and that if you don't do that, they're all untrusted by default, and active record will not update the way that you think it will. Edit and update are very similar to new and create in this regard. The main difference is that in the case of edit, the form should appear with existing values. And again, if you're using the Rails helpers when you say movie.title for one of the form fields, if movie has been set to something that was read from the database because you're about to edit an existing thing, the form will have, by default, the existing values already pre-populated in the fields with no additional work required on your part. And it's because Rails knows that when the form is being generated, if the movie object is brand new, never been saved, has nil for all the attributes, you'll get a blank form. If it's an existing one, Rails will arrange for the form's values to be pre-populated to the right thing. And the form action, if you look at the Rails routes that we did before, it says that it uses put. Now, this is a little bit tricky, and I, I will mention it here, but this is one of the things to read a little bit more about in the book. Browsers generally only generate get and post requests. They do not, in general, generate put requests directly. However, the sort of restful resource best principles for design say that the preferred HTTP method to use for an update operation is put, as opposed to using post, which is more traditionally used for um, a creation operation. So how is it that there's a route that says it needs to match put followed by a URI, and I'm telling you that browsers do not generate put routes? What actually happens is that part of the Rails routing machinery embeds in the form some extra information that says the form is going to be submitted using post, but it's supposed to be for an update request. So before the controller sees it, internally basically change the HTTP method to be put. Why? Because this allows the same logic in your app to work from both an API and a browser. You don't have to worry about the fact that a form coming from a browser always has post, but an API request for an update would usually have put because that's considered best practice. Rails essentially arranges the world so that you can just worry about matching the well-designed RESTful route, and it takes care of essentially translating the browser's post into a put before your app even sees it. That way you can have a single set of logic that sort of matches both cases. So we've seen sort of a, a whirlwind tour of how the basic form actions work, how they glue things to active record, how the views generate not only the forms, but the links to the actions that the forms will submit to. And when we continue, we will talk about what to do after an action like create, which doesn't make sense to have a view, because what are you going to show? The thing that was created? That will be next segment. <laughs>